One of the things that I have not talked about on this channel so far is how I actually became a professor and the process of doing so. Is it some kind of convoluted process or do we just apply online, send our resume in and that's it? I'm gonna give in this video a little bit about how you can become a professor. I've said in the video before that I don't think that most people should become PhDs. I'm here to tell you that you should not ever consider getting a PhD and that most people should not become professors, but if you want to become one, this might be of use to you. So the number one step that every person must have at least recently is you must have a PhD in order to become a professor. This may not necessarily be true everywhere, but I don't know of a single counterexample anywhere. If you want to have any kind of professor position, you must have a PhD in whatever discipline you're working in. There are some instructor positions where you only need to have a master's degree, but even then you still need to have an advanced degree of some kind. But if you wanna have a professor degree, you have to have a PhD. And that kind of makes sense because to do a PhD, you need to do some amount of research and professors usually are going to do some amount of teaching and research. So let's say that you want to apply to University X and they're offering a professor position and you are really interested in working with them. What things do you need to prepare? So two things you need are a teaching and a research statement. This is going to vary across institutions, but those two are very often going to be required. Your teaching statement, all it is, is just your philosophy on teaching. Do you do anything special compared to any other instructor? Do you have any prospects for what you like to teach? Because the university wants to know whether or not you're going to be a good fit for them, have you actually done a little bit of research into what kind of courses that they offer? Are there any courses that you want to create that the department does not already have? Those things are really useful for a position which involves some amount of teaching. You should give your philosophy on what your teaching style is. And so one of the other big things, number two, is the research statement because most professor positions are going to involve some amount of research. So you need to say what your philosophy, so to speak, is on research. What kind of work have you done during your PhD because you pretty much have to have a PhD now? And what work are you planning on doing? Are there any people within the department that you want to collaborate with? Can you support any PhD students if the university has PhD students? Or can you support undergrads because not all research areas can support undergrads? Could you support those? And also giving some insight in what you want to do with your research. What are your long-term goals? What are you planning on doing with your research? And also giving where have you published anything as well as giving what current projects you're working on. And one big thing is that you have to have letters of recommendation, usually from your advisor and other people on your PhD committee, but not necessarily. Sometimes it could be other professors in your current department, whatever school you're doing your PhD at, but it could also be other faculty at other institutions that you may have collaborated with or have met at conferences, etc. You usually need three to four of these depending on the institution. And it's really important that you get good letters of recommendation because they can give some additional insight beyond what you will have to say on paper. So a very common website that you apply for these positions at is Academic Jobs Online. And the great thing about this website is that you can upload all of these materials once, and then any time you want to apply for a new professor position also on the same website, you just say, hey, I'm gonna move all of my teaching and research statements, I'm gonna put them over here to this application also. There are some other things that may be dependent on the institution, such as a cover letter and maybe a diversity statement, other things that may be needed for a given institution. So what about the interview process itself? So you put all of these things out and you may have to wait a very long time because these kinds of things are really, really slow. And one thing to keep in mind is that these positions are incredibly competitive. So I've heard some reports that some professor positions if there's only one position going to be available, can have several hundred applicants. And a very large portion of these people are very qualified. They all have PhDs, or maybe will have a PhD at the time. And so therefore you have to give some information to the committee that will make you stand out compared to everyone else. You can't just say, oh, I like teaching computer science because I've always loved computers. If you have a PhD, you very likely have been interested in the material for a very long time, and so you can't stand out because of that. 
Are there any specific teaching things that you do differently than other people? Are there specific research things that you do differently than other people? Those are the things that matter. And not just saying, oh, computer science is just awesome. I hope that I can change the world someday. That is not going to set you apart. Let's imagine that you are incredibly lucky enough to land an interview. What happens in the interview? So very often, not always, you have to do a phone interview, which is just a rather quick, in some sense, conversation with some of the people on the hiring committee. And so the first filter in any job search is getting away any people who just did not follow the instructions. Like they didn't provide a teaching statement. They didn't provide a research statement. They didn't have a cover letter. They don't have references or they just basically don't have the requirements at all. So that's a first filter. And then the second filter is potentially through this phone interview process where the hiring committee talks to the candidate and just says, can you talk a little bit more about your statement about teaching? Like this specific point in your teaching statement, could you expand a little bit more upon that? Or maybe something about your research or whatever that you submitted. It's just a quick conversation. It's a formal conversation, but it's a, a quick one. And let's just say that you are incredibly lucky enough not just to escape the first filter, but also the second filter, you are going to now have an on-campus interview, which is one of the holy grails in becoming a professor. If you don't have this, then you cannot become a professor at most places. There are some exceptions, of course. So what does an on-campus interview usually have? What it usually is, apart from the last two years, of course, is a day and a half of constant interviewing where you're going to be talking with many people in the department, the department head, some senior faculty, you're gonna to talk to junior faculty, you're gonna talk with students, you're gonna do a whole bunch of interviewing with practically any person of any relevance in the department, and it's definitely the hiring committee you're going to be talking with. You're going to be grilled about every single thing about your teaching and research statement and potentially many other questions that you may not have be prepared for. So one thing that you can do is just to think of questions. If you were on the committee, what would you ask the candidate and prepare answers to those questions? One thing that you can do that would really help is to see for teaching, for example, to look at the course listing on the university website and see what meshes with you. Do you like, in this case, computer science, theory of computer science, or do you hate it? Do you like intro computer science, or do you hate it? What kinds of things would you be able to teach if you were offered the job? And one of the most important parts of the on-campus interview is the research talk, where you're going to give, depending on the university, a 45 to 60 minute talk on your research that is a basic introduction to what you're doing and what you are going to plan to do. So one of the things that I talked about was some of the work that I did in my PhD dissertation and that I plan to publish soon after uh, that point. And it's a formal talk, of course, but you're going to be giving an introduction to your research. So you're not going to assume that your audience knows everything about your research, but you'll assume that they're within your field so that they can see, ah, there is the connection between what I'm doing and what this potential candidate is doing. And let's just say that you make it through the onslaught, which is that day and a half of interviewing and research talk and potentially a teaching talk too. What happens after that is the waiting game because there are multiple other people potentially who are doing this on-campus interview too. And many times they might only be able to select one of the candidates. And if you happen to be incredibly lucky enough to escape the third filter, then they will extremely likely offer you a job. And one of the indicators is that if you have an on-campus interview, they're going to be paying for you to come on campus anyway. So if they're gonna be spending money on you, chances are they have some interest in you. It's likely, much more likely I should say, that you will be offered a job. And then once you're offered a job, congrats, you can start becoming a professor. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts about becoming a professor into the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you wanna support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.